All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jake Thompson, who is in Frisco in Texas. How are you doing, Jake? Hey, doing great, John. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. And Jake is a popular keynote speaker and entrepreneur. Um, his passion is helping leaders develop grit and influence the foundations of organizations and really getting people, as your organization is called, to compete every day. And you have built businesses way back from 2011 when you were just selling T-shirts out of the trunk of your car and you've built successful businesses um, all based around competing every day. And what we want to talk about today is... So obviously everybody knows that sales is a competitive sport, right? <laughs> a contact sport in many ways, yep. <laughs> a brutal one. However, um, you know, competing in sales, the biggest competitor in sales, the biggest one you'll always come up, up against is yourself, okay? And you've got to excel. If you want to excel, you've got to plan every day and you've got to be ready to compete with yourself. So this is, this is the premise of, of what we're talking about today is... So just in general, Jake, um, why is focusing on competing against yourself or really understanding that that's the key? Why is that so critical to a success mindset? Well, I, I think the biggest is you play the comparison game. Otherwise, you're going to constantly mm -hmm. be looking at what someone else is doing, where someone else is saying, how they're pitching, how they're presenting without taking into account what their story is, what their strengths are, uh, trying to essentially imitate everyone else versus if you're competing against yourself, you're trying to figure out where your strengths are, where those weaknesses mm -hmm. are you need to curb and compete, but really what are your strengths and how do you sell most effectively? How can you tell that best story? How can you connect with that customer in just a way that's unique for you than it would be someone else? And when we play this constant comparison game, we get distracted from what we do control, which is how we show up, the habits we build, the processes we build, how we build just not only picking up the phone, sending out emails, building connections, and we try to play someone else's game. And, and when you try to play someone else's game, it's a losing battle. It's true in mm -hmm. sports when a team avoids and abandons their strengths to try to pattern someone else versus sticking with what they do really well and doubling down on it. And I think that's what's so important, especially in sales is there's incredible salespeople all over the world. And a lot of them do it very differently from each other. And there's, you know, a million ways to skin a cat for lack of a better phrase. We have to understand what we do well. And then once we do that competing every day against yourself is, is really walking in every day and saying, how can I do better today? I can be a little yeah. more efficient with my time. How can I be do better in terms of asking the right questions to build a better connection with my prospect? What areas are there improvement for me? And, and that's what you slowly start to build on. And that's really where the fun is because in those competitions, if you can look back and be like, you know what, yesterday I, I really messed up that sales mm -hmm. pitch. Today, I was more prepared going into it. I just nailed all the points I wanted to. I felt like I got a better reception from the, from the prospect. It changes everything in that regard in terms of how you grow and develop because you start to see where your progress is. And, and as we all know, unless we're tracking and realizing yeah. what we're growing, we tend to lose that motivation and fall off. Yeah. And, and I think just there's a couple of things I just wanted to focus in on there. What you said is the first thing is I, I totally agree about the comparison piece and we do live in a comparison culture in many ways like and, and especially social media has just you know exploded that where people are just constantly like looking at their life and then looking at other people's lives and going oh my life doesn't ma add match up to yep. Jake's life even though all I'm getting is a snapshot in time of your life I'm not really getting full insight but it, and as you say it's the same in sales it's very easy to look at other people, it's very easy to look at circumstances and what's going on in the world and find a hundred thousand different reasons why things aren't going your way. But as you say, if you really take that accountability piece, and I think that's where it comes back to the accountability piece to say, am I doing everything I can? And am I, uh, as you said, am I uh, really focusing on my strengths and really developing those? So, uh, so a lot of this comes back to taking personal accountability for your circumstances. 100%. It's essentially becoming the person that racks their shopping cart versus mm -hmm. leaving it floating alone by <laughs> itself. And that's just, I mean, that's that's key. Everything you talked about is because we do live in this comparison society. And, and you take this year, for instance, in March, everything kind of dropped off for a lot of us, those of us mm -hmm. in sales, those of us that speak, 
everything that kind of could go wrong went yeah. wrong in that moment when everything locked down. But what it created was an opportunity if we looked at it with the right perspective to say, okay, what's still within my control? What is still everything in my ability that I can change? And, and from a speaker standpoint, that was creating virtual programs. From a sales standpoint, it's how do we better connect in terms of providing solutions for clients who, who are really struggling right now with all of this unknown? And mm -hmm. that's sales, providing opportunities and solutions for people that need it. And so we have to constantly be showing up to be accountable to ourselves, to be accountable to the goals we want, to say, am I maximizing every possible thing I can do today to improve my position and improve my prospect's position? Yeah, and and one of the things that uh, that, that you highlight as well is, as you said, it's it's turning up every day and it's working hard even when it's hard. Right, because there's always that temptation. Yeah, let's face it. I mean, we're human beings. It's temptation to throw pity parties for ourselves, or to say, uh, "Listen, I've done as much as I can. There's nothing else I can do." Even when we know that's not a hundred percent true. So, I mean, I think in your 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 book, you have a chapter uh, called like "At Work Your Talent," and I love that. If you if you explain that, in particularly in a sales context. Yeah. So essentially, the the gist of that. Uh, chapter is around the importance of effort and how Angela Duckworth in her book Grit talks about passion and perseverance and grit and, and talks about how talent factors into th the equation for success. But it's such a smaller piece than we, we believe it is. In, in fact, it's our effort and our consistent effort at that that is more important than what our talent is. And so it's up to us to be able to outwork it. And so when we talk about working it, it's are you maximizing every opportunity, whether it's your first sales job and you don't mm -hmm. really love what you do? Are you still showing up every day doing your absolute best? Is it your 15th year and you've just lost motivation and you're like, well, I don't, you know, I'm already this far in, I can just mail yeah. it in. Or are you still showing up every single day consistently? And, and that's a separator because it's that consistent showing up here, I love to talk about from sales, it's planting seeds. Because yeah. for some of us in sales, like we're planting seeds two months, six months, mm -hmm. 12 months, 18 months before there's anything ever to harvest. And But unless you're continually doing the work, plowing the field, planting those seeds every single day, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months from now, you're not going to have anything to harvest. And that's what a lot of people on the outside don't understand. And I think a lot of people early in sales don't understand is, all of the seeds you're planting now, it's not for harvest tomorrow. It's for harvest six months from now, one year from now, 10 years from now. In some cases, you just keep showing up and doing the little things, working the process, knowing that if you do it consistently enough for long enough, there will be a giant harvest down the road. And knowing that even when the harvest come, that you got to plant seeds for the for the harvest uh, for harvest in the future. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the things that you mentioned at the uh, at the outset of this was planning, right? How important planning is, and 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 just what you were saying there about yeah, maybe you've been doing this for a long time. Maybe you show up every day and you think you do everything you can, but maybe you're just kind of repeating the same things as you've done over and over. Maybe as you say, you're inadvertently or unconsciously dialing it in but actually having a plan for your day and for your week and for your month I mean how critical is that in ensuring that you don't just end up going through the motions well and what's the old phrase and if you fail to plan you plan to mm -hmm. fail mm -hmm. uh, the daily process is a big one for us because I think a lot of times we try to remember up here we jot a scribble yeah. note here or there and there's so many different things going on on a day-to-day -day basis. So many messages we're getting hit with on a daily basis that trying to remember everything you should be doing on a daily basis is a little tough. And so the importance of having a plan of really bookending your days with the most important things, which a lot of times are sales calls. First thing mm -hmm. in the morning, last thing in the afternoon. How do you start and stop your day keeping the most important priorities, the most important priorities? And then understanding every day, what are the checks I need to hit the box that essentially plant my seeds? And part of that is what outreach am I doing? What research am I doing? And then what growth and learning am I doing? Because as you said, even if we've done this for 10 to 15 years, there are still things out there that we can learn, whether it's a new piece of software and how to better utilize it for what we do, whether it's somebody that's having incredible success in our industry, just learning how they've gone about it to see, well, how do I want to tweak slightly what I do? That's not comparing ourselves to them. That's finding the opportunity to learn and adapt it to what we do. And so if we create this daily checklist or scorecard, as I like to call it, 
and work it every single day and not focus on how many got closed, but instead, mm-hmm. how many calls am I making? How many touches am I making? How many things that are 100% within my control am I doing every single day? That's helping you plant the seed, check the box, work it down the line. And if you factor in that growth, that learning opportunity every day, every week, then what you're doing is continually adding that little bitty 1%, that little bitty 1% that in the moment, we don't notice it. But over time, you can't help but see the results of it. Yeah, and I think that's a critical piece that you um, that you um, outlined there is that idea of growth and learning. It's because sometimes I, I feel that that people wait around for their organizations to like say, "Oh, hey, Jake, I'm going to send you on some training. I'm going to invest in you on all this," which is great when it happens, and it should happen more. Probably doesn't happen enough, you know, particularly for sales and that. But but the point is nobody's ever going to care as much about your success as yourself right so yep. that that whole point about about learning and growing and i do think it's something that it's very easy to lose sight of and to kind of think well i've been doing this for a while what is there for me to learn whereas the people who are really successful are always trying and innovating and trying new things and trying to self improve yeah you think about it from a sports perspective look at the mm-hmm. greatest players they go into an off season, they're asking their coaches, Hey, what do you think the areas I need to improve on? They talk to their trainers. Where do the areas and the weaknesses you see I can improve on? They're very proactive in terms of finding the areas and their weaknesses and their blind spots, and then getting in the gym and getting after it. They're not waiting Mm -hmm. until two weeks before the season starts to start preparing. Once the coach says, Hey, we have practice. You need to be there. They're in the gym all of the time before on their own being proactive, preparing. And that's why they're so great on game day versus people that just wait until they're told what to do or wait until the coach says you need to be here and do this. They're really farther behind and they never quite get to that next level or discover what they're capable of. And so the ones of us listening to this, if if you're investing time listening and watching this, you're already a step ahead of the game because you're taking a proactive step in terms of your growth and your development. Mm -hmm. Where else can you do that? What book can you pick up? What, you know, video series can you watch? What course can you pay for? Heck, the one thing I used to do for years, even before I started my own company, is I would trade essentially a vacation every year to go to a conference, whether it was a leadership development sales conference. I'd take two to three days. I'd find a city that was having it that looked like a great Mm -hmm. place to visit, and I'd go to the conference. And I would make sure that I was, instead of spending it going to the beach or going on another trip, I was like, I'm using it for my investment. And the skills, as well as the network I was able to build at those things, paid dividends years and years later when I started mm-hmm. my own venture. And so that's just another example of not only planting seeds with your prospects, but planting your own seeds of growth, of putting aside a little bit of time to do that development, because nobody's ever really going to tell you, you need to do this. If they care about you, if your manager wants you to succeed, they may encourage it, but no one's going to do it for yourself like you can. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And and then I think it goes for, you know, the putting in the, the hard work as well, because nobody's going to fill your pipeline like you are. Um, yep. In fact, probably nobody's going to fill your pipeline for you at all. Uh, and uh, and even if you're unfortunate to be given like leads from marketing or whatever, the fact is that the more self-sufficient you can be, the, the extra things you can do. And I think that's, again, where separates people is where they just go above and beyond. And they have contingencies in place. Yep. Yeah, they, the going above and beyond is never going to hurt you because what it's going to mm-hmm. do is build your skill set. It's going to build your experience. And most importantly, it's going to continue to build your network. And as we know, anything can happen during the course of a year, as we've seen in 2020, that that maybe that job opportunity disappears, maybe that role you thought is no longer available. But if you put in the time to build your network and build those relationships, there may be an opportunity elsewhere. And because you've built those relationships and people have seen your experience and seen your work, they're able to help you. And so if you're sitting Mm -hmm. here watching this thinking, well, I haven't done that. And, you know, here we are now. First time, best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. Second best time is today. And so (laughs) today is a great chance to start building that skill set and building that network because you never know down the road when you can need it and when you may need those connections. And the other thing I think, as we we touched on briefly earlier, is is understanding the purpose of what you're doing. Like really, like what is your motivation? What is your purpose? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you willing why would you be willing to go above and beyond what wouldn't what would it take for you to put that extra effort in 
Yeah. And the knowing the why is so crucial because we're all going to have the days that suck. We're going to have the, the, the bad streaks where we're just not being able to get that close. We're going to have those. And if we have that purpose, that's a little bit bigger than ourselves. That isn't just, Hey, I'm just lining my own pocket because I want to buy a car or whatever the case may Mm be. You know, we're providing for a family. We're trying to build financial freedom, wherever it is. If we see something bigger, it gives us just a little more fuel to say, you know what? There's a lot that's not going my way, but what can I do today to show mm-hmm. up for that future goal? And, and that's something I know for me personally, that's gotten me through some rough times early on in business uh, and building those relationships with clients and hearing their stories, reinforcing that purpose and why. Uh, but that's something I encourage everybody to carve out time and do and, and evaluate it every year. Like is three years from now, I sit down at the end of the year, is that why still the same thing or, or have you gotten there and what's the new one? So that you're always remembering why you do the work you do. So on the days that you don't want to do it, yeah. you have a reason why you should. Yeah, because I think that's so, inc- that's so incredibly important and especially in sales because you're going to have crappy days whether you like it or not. And, and you know, you're going to have the yep. no days. You're going to have the everything seems to you know not be working out for days. So you need something to carry you through through that. But those are also those are the great days when you can say, OK, you know, maybe I should spend a little more time on self-development today or maybe I should spend more time on preparing for tomorrow or whatever. I mean, there's ways of rather than just accepting accepting defeat. I like you have a chapter called Never Let the Hard Days Win. And I think that's a great one to finish on. Yeah, it's it's exactly what you said. When things aren't going your way, it's making sure that whatever happens before you go to bed, you create some good in that day. And, and like you said, it may be if you're just hitting no after no after no, and you just feel like your spirits and attitude starting to slip, taking that time out to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to spend 30 minutes right now listening to this podcast. I'm going to spend 30 mm-hmm. minutes diving into this sales book and making notes on how I can better deliver, or I'm going to go find a coworker or friend that I can p- practice this call on. I'm going to find a way that when this day ends, some things didn't go my way, but I can look back and point and say, you know what? That was a bad day, but I still found a way to be in a better position tomorrow. And if I can do that, that means the next time I have a bad day, I can do it again. And it gives us that confidence that we need versus going the opposite direction and just letting that bad streak continue. Yeah. And and basically sort of saying, well, I'm helpless. There's nothing I can do as opposed to saying there's lots of things I can do. Yes. And here's the thing is they may not pay dividends immediately, but we got to get away from this in this again, this like instant gratification world that we live in thing. As you said earlier, sometimes the seeds you plant the 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 sprout you know they don't bloom for years, years but if you don't plant them they they never will so invest in yourself um you know every day even when the, you're having a bad day like look for ways to turn it into a productive day yeah i mean sales what is it one giant story it's how we're telling yeah. that story to the customer and if we think about great stories the victor in those stories the hero never just kind of sat down and said, woe is me, I need to give up. They still had the attitude that even when the darkest of nights was looming, I'll still find a way to get through it. I'm still going to do something to get there. And so if we want to be selling a story that other people want to be a part of, that want to buy our product, that want our services, we have to remember that victor mindset instead of that victim mindset, because no one wants to be part of that victim story. They want to be part of a story with the victor because that means somebody won. And so that's kind of the attitude we have to have closing things out, especially on those tough days. Yeah, no, fantastic. Listen, the book is called Compete Every Day, The Not-So-Secret Secret Secret to Winning Your Work and Life. Uh, Author Jake Thompson, all of Jake's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so I'm a keynote speaker. I work with teams, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs and managers on how they can build a championship mindset, not only in themselves, but in their team culture. I started, as you said, 2011, selling t-shirts out of the back of my car and little by little grew up from there. And, And so love what I get to do now working with teams and sales teams, especially on how we show up, how we compete every day. Uh, and would love to get connected to anyone watching this. So if you're on social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, I'm there. Would love to say hi and get connected with you. Great. Listen, thanks, Jake. Um, I'm definitely reach out and, and connect with Jake and, and check out his book and, and everything they do. I think uh, 2021, there's it's going to be great opportunities for those who are willing to reach out and grab them. So give yourself the opportunity to compete every day. 
My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeline of CRM. I will see you all again for another interview really soon. Thank you.